Hey guys, how's it going? Now, a few days ago, the Wild Vicious Syndicate uh, Data Reaper Report number 31 got released. It's something that I work on as one of the writers. Uh, get me out, there's another writer. And, you know, we work with the team at Vicious Syndicate. And I thought it would be a really good time to just kind of reflect on where we're at right now in Wild as we head into rotation. Um, and also, I, I kind of want to break this video up into sort of two parts. Talk about the report and any you know, big takeaways I personally had when looking at all of that stuff. And then later on in the video, I'm going to talk about what the meta is like at high legend. When we do the VS report, the the rank brackets that we look at, um, you know, are things like uh, platinum, lower diamond, upper diamond, legend as a whole. But And we don't really have the ability to look at specifically the top, you know, X11 MMR bracket. But that's it. Let's look back at the, <laughs> the VS report that came out, number 31. The biggest thing that you can see is, hey, this meta is very, very diverse in terms of options that you have if you want to be um, competitively focused. And that's great because Stormwind, <laughs> the expansion before this, was not like that at all. In Stormwind, it, there was a period of time where you only want to play Demon Seed, and then after that, you only want to play Odd Hunter, even Warlock, and Pirate Warrior. And everything else kind of felt like it was choked out. And since that time, things have gotten a lot better. And right now, we're in about as, as good of a situation that... I can remember in wild when it comes to those sort of competitive diversity. The other thing that, you know, the, that stood out to me the most, you know, the, uh, the big narratives, the big stories in the report was pirate warrior. I did a video about a month ago talking about why I didn't think pirate warrior was that big of a problem or why it didn't really require immediate intervention from blizzard. And it does seem like a lot of the stats and things that we saw kind of bore themselves out um, to support that argument. So, for example, um, Pirate Warrior is still quite popular at Upper Diamond, about 18%, which is high, but not egregious compared to things that we've seen in the past, whether it's like the Aggro Druid decks or Secret Mage or uh, even Shaman, like a long, long time before that. Like, 18% is high, but it's not, you know, once we get in the 20s, that's when, you know, things are going pretty badly. <laughs> um, and that's where Pirate Warrior was at before the nerf. It was at 25% um, in the previous report. So, 18% is still high, but a lot more, you know, manageable, tolerable. Um, and that drops a bit at Legend as a whole. It goes all the way down to 11. The other thing with Pirate Warrior that we could really see was uh, its win rate remains still pretty good. Uh, very good, even. But it doesn't actually line up very well against any of the... Or the majority of the top performing decks in the meta. Uh, Pirate Warrior gets a lot of its wins right now from sort of just punishing unrefined jank. <laughs> um, or some of the other best decks in the format simply just being a bit underplayed. Now, the other thing that I really noticed... Uh, when writing the report and kind of looking at everything was Free Shaman. Free Shaman didn't have a tier 1 win rate, so it's very easy for it to sort of slip by people um, as perhaps being a bit of a non-issue. But when you actually look at the Free Shaman matchup sp spread, uh, I, I got pretty spooked. <laughs> um, basically just because the deck is so close to being completely uncounterable. Now, what I mean by that is that Free Shaman has a lot of matchups right now which are pretty close to even. Um that are, you know, like 48% at worst, and then they range up to being, you know, slightly positive, and then it has some very, very good matchups against things like Shadow Priest and uh, Beast Druid. There are only a few matchups in the entire format where it's sort of like low 40s, and that's against things like uh, even Hunter from memory, um, Kingsbane Rogue, uh, Wildfire Mage. There's just not a lot of stuff that can actually beat Shaman, especially amongst the better decks in the format. Amongst the better decks in the format, it's kind of just like Questline Hunter um, and maybe even Hunter. And so if Free Shaman gets just a little bit better in those matchups, there's probably not going to be anything that can stop it from snowballing. And I suppose the the third thing uh, that I, I really picked up when looking at each deck was Cavern's Rogue, Quest Rogue, old school Quest Rogue. Quest Rogue was very funny, where when it first got reverted, there was a lot of panic about it, and the deck sucked. <laughs> like, it was terrible. Um, like, why would you ever print this? This is so stupid. Why are we reverting it? There's no good that can come from it. And for a long time, it looked like those fears were completely unfounded. And the win rate of Quest Rogue was super low. That It didn't see any play. Um, it was fine, right? It's like, oh, that's just not good enough for Wild. And then with Ram Commander, that kind of changed a little bit. Now Quest Rogue is legitimately one of the best decks in the format. It actually had the uh, second highest win rate at Legend when we looked at our power rankings. Um, it's still completely polarizing and oppressive 
but also gets destroyed by certain other decks. But yeah, seeing Quest Rogue perform that well is very scary because Quest Rogue in general, you don't want highly polarized decks to be popular. It's something that's happening right now in Standard, and it's why a lot of people don't like the current Standard format. Because the game comes a lot more, a lot more down to, you know, queue simulator. Like, oh, did I queue my favorables or unfavorables? Now, that's always going to be slightly true, but there's a big difference when those favorables are 40, 60, 60, 40 versus 70, 30, right? Like, it just creates a much more extreme experience. I, I think Quest Rogue in general sort of showed itself to be not only, like, a real deck, uh, but one of the best decks in the format. So after the release of the VS report, I decided to go through a whole bunch of games, whole bunch of replays, and look at what exactly I'd been playing against over the past few weeks. Um, I had some friends uh, also, you know, volunteer and step up and do that. Uh, so thank you to those people. And I was able to get about a thousand games um, and kind of get a pretty good idea, I think, of what the, the meta looks like and how different decks perform right now. So the, the big takeaway is that at top 50, top 100 legend at those kind of ranks, Pirate Warrior isn't real. <laughs> um, Pirate Warrior does not exist. Pirate Warrior is about two and a half to maybe three and a half percent of the format uh, at those ranks, which is very different than what players outside that, you know, 11x uh, MMR bracket experience. And that can kind of cause some pretty huge ripple effects, right? When aggro disappears to that level, it doesn't get necessarily replaced by other aggro decks. Um, it's not like there's a huge influx of Shadow Priest and, um, you know, Beast Druid and other, you know, like Kingsbane, Even Hunter. Like, those decks don't just jump up suddenly because of the lack of Pirate Warrior. Aggro just has a much smaller presence at High Legend. Um, and it's more like there's a bit more Ramp Druid, there's more Free Shaman, um, there's decks like that that kind of pick up a little bit. The fallout from all of this, right? Much less aggro, more druid. Quest Rogue gets really good. <laughs> like, Quest Rogue is absurd right now at High Legend, or at least it has been, I should say, of the past few weeks. Uh, Quest Rogue is so clearly the top performing deck when I look at what I've played against and what uh, other people have played against, those 1,000 games, that it kind of blew my mind a little bit. I, I was shocked, I'll, I'll say it, by just how high the Quest Rogue win rate was. Um, it's not even like the uh, the format is... Or the players aren't even playing enough aggro. It's just that a lot of the aggressive decks don't even perform that well, it seems like, based on the High Legend meta. Um, and there isn't really enough of a Quest Rogue population yet uh, to justify it. If the Quest Rogue population skyrockets, then I guess we will see a lot more Shadow Priest and things like that. But again, that kind of harbors back to the extremely polarizing matchup experience that I was talking about and why I, I am a little bit nervous <laughs> about, about things moving forward. Um, other things that I, I feel like I should note when talking about the High Legend meta, like what are the, you know, the top performing decks. Um, so even Paladin still looks very solid. Uh, Beast Druid, Ramp Druid, Free Shaman. Um, a lot of these decks perform really well. It, it's mostly just that Quest Rogue seems to be absurdly good and Pirate Warrior and Quest Hunter. Uh, Quest Hunter is another one that kind of drops off a bit because, again, there's much less Pirate Warrior to pick on. There's more things like w Druid, which is an unfavorable, and so it does drop off a little bit based on what I saw. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, again, if you haven't read the report, I would definitely recommend uh, going it and giving it a read. Again, you don't have to take the tier list that's there verbatim and just like... Uh, assume that there's no other good info in the report because you can do things like what I did which is look at how my matchups are different compared to Legend as a whole that doesn't mean the report is useless it just means you know it's important to recognize that your own experiences are necessarily going to match the aggregate and there's still like a lot of really good info and um, cool stuff a lot of the decks as well uh, had a lot of input and uh, information, so there was a lot of good deck building going on in the report as well. So either way, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, I always really enjoy getting the info to write it, and I really like it when people enjoy the read as well. <laughs> so yeah. Um, either way, thank you guys very much for hanging out. You can always catch me on Twitch.tv live at twitch.tv slash Corbett Games, and also you can come join the Discord or check me out on Twitter as well. So I hope you have a good one. Peace out. Bye.